www.skfm.tv I cannot read that. Only the that's, pharmacy can read that. That's my that. signature. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. And, that's, and my name is Sean, Sean. Kennedy. Oh, you related to Kennedy family? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they go way back. Way back. We're well, trying to crash my plane right now, I tell you. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? My name's Sean Kennedy. This is Fucking Man. This is the latest issue of Brainwashing. So here we are. We got some decent video production going on here. A special shouts to Sumerian and uh, all the wonderful gear. He's bought. He spent a lot of bucks to get some decent processing power so we can bring good product to you, the viewer. Isn't that awesome? Um, I'm currently wearing, uh, sporting in my motif, my I Am a Corporate Horror T-shirt. Actually, it's it's a lie. I don't have a corporate horror T-shirt. This is Sumerian's I Am a Corporate Horror T-shirt, which you can get your very own. I'm a corporate whore t-shirt from angryshirts.com. Now, you'll notice that there's going to be websites appearing right about here throughout the entire film. And the reason why that is is because, well, we're selling out. We're going for all the money we can. <laughs> No, the reason why we're doing it is because most of the stuff is in-house. The music you hear is from uh, Sumerian's band, which you're going to be able to get music off of mp3.com, which is all the stuff's going to be able to be downloaded. It's very, very cool. Let's see what else is going on. This issue, we got a bunch of groovy stuff. We got a bunch of stuff that I did in the past, because we've been meaning to do video for a long fucking time, and I just haven't been able to pull it off. We haven't been able to get the gear together to do it, and the last one when I shot on my little quick cam at work, going, and it was cool, and everybody really ate it up, so Sam went, fuck yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's just make this an episodic thing where, like, you know, once a month or whatever, we could try to get one out to you guys and go from there. It'll be very fucking cool. And this is what we're going to be filming when we go down to Burning Man. We're going to have Sean K at Burning Man, and we'll be able to do, you know, I'll bring you worldwide coverage. I've become a media icon. You know, I don't know, fuck, whatever. But anyway, so there it is. Uh, so to start things out right, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, uh, oh, let's see, what would be the first thing we're going to put on here? Let's put on the Elohim. Yes, the Elohim. Now, these guys are a bunch of fucking shithawk weirdos who uh, believe that there's this race car driver, right? He's driving along, and he sees, oh, off to the side, oh, my God, there's aliens over there. And it, uh, there's a little spaceship, and they all flew him back to their home base on fucking Planet Nine or whatever. And uh, they gave, told him that all the prophets in Mohammed and shit are all like robots, and he has to bring the truth to the people. Does this sound confusing? Are you confused? I was confused confused too. What's really confusing is how they use their symbols, a little Star of David with a swastika inside of it. Very popular. That got a lot of votes. Um, what you want to do though is, anyway, you'll see these guys. These guys talk about cloning the Elohim, you know what I mean? And uh, they're the guys who've been in on Slashdot lately talking about cloning and we're opening our own cloning institute for helping of the Elohim. They're a fucking cult and they're a kind of a dangerous cult because they have their own little marriages and shit like this that's all very open and such. Uh, after doing some research into them, they're a little bit freaky, very fucked up UFO cult. Not nearly as fucked up as, say, Scientology, but still pretty fucked up. And the only reason why they're not more fucked up is because their uh, logic is so incredibly fuck sword, it's not even funny. So a while back, what happened was I was working as a security guard walking around this parking lot, making sure shit didn't get stolen. That was my cover when I wasn't, you know, a deep internet fucking DJ. You know, I pose as a security guy. So uh, what happens is, is I'm walking around the parking lot, and there's all these pamphlets tucked into windows, you know? And I'm like, fuck. So I go, and I take a pamphlet, and I look, and it says, the true face of God. The true face. And I'm like, fuck. Who doesn't want to see the true face of God? So I go and I uh, find out. Now, you'll get a, uh, on the thing, we got some video footage of the actual pamphlet I saw. And we'll, it scrolls down and you'll be able to see the, the pamphlet. But it's very, very cool. Very much fun. Uh, and what I did is they were having a meeting where you could go and ask questions. So, far be it from me to not go to one of these meetings. And uh, I, I think I discovered the truth behind the Elohim. What say they're right? What say? They really do exist. What say these people actually do exist on the outside realms? I have discovered that the Elohim are actually getting very close to turning us all into another episode of V. That's right, that old lady's episode. Elohim V. You make the decision. The true face of 
God. God, that's like great. So basically, God, are uh, like is or the Elo- Elohim, Elohim, yeah, Elohim, Elohim, is God, right? Well, what we mistrust. Well, yeah, well, yeah, is, no, is our yeah, concept of yeah, God. Yeah. So the things that happen in the Bible are actually from Elohim, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and now the the Elo- the Elohim, Elohim are. Uh, after all that's happened, they're coming back, and they're uh, they want uh, a temple, basically being built in Jerusalem, right? Like there's eventually like, an awareness that's yeah. going to go on. Everyone's going to be aware of it, and we're going to be talking about a lot of nonviolence, a lot of peace, a lot of that kind of stuff. So no one's and everyone's got peace and understanding. And then they're going to come back. Yeah. But um, if if the evil evil in our God, right, which is is what the, what you're saying, then. Wouldn't the Elohim be, or Elohim be responsible for the floods and for the raining fire on Egypt and for the plagues and for all of the uh, death and destruction that has happened throughout the entire Old Testament? And could this not just be another sort of ploy? Like I'm, I myself, I'm not, you know, going either way. But it, my my point is, is if they are, the Elohim are our God, right? Then if they're smaller in stature than us, right? Yeah. But it goes from his description, right? They're yeah. smaller in stature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they would come here and create us. And uh, if they tried, like if there was any kind of, like there's a lot of thing, a lot of things on earth that a lot of people might want. And I'm just thinking that if these guys were to come here and like, if in the Bible the Elohim, because if the Elohim are God, and then the Jews and everybody are saying, yeah, and then God rained fire on the cities and like killed thousands of people and sent these angels through the streets killing all the children and all this kind of stuff and meanwhile it's all these guys why in the world would we want to have these guys come back that's my point like like yeah, I, I mean they, they probably wouldn't want to fight a land war with us because like if we're you know generally got size and mass on them we'll rip their heads off but no. like if they're gonna like in, sorry in, in the video it said that the prophets like Moses I think on the thing it said Moses Jesus mm-hmm. Buddha 40 40, there's 40, 40, there's 40 of them okay 40 of them. and so like if if like the confrontations that happen in the Bible because of God like you God told me to kill you something was smoking that was just a misunderstanding and all that okay Moses who's a prophet Moses was in Egypt. And Moses said, hey, let the Jews go. And the Pharaoh said, stop it. And Moses said, okay, I'll rain fire on your city for three days. Because my God will do that. So if he was talking to the Elohim, then the Elohim rained fire on Egypt for three days. And brought Ogus floods to place. So how can these guys be positive? That's my point. That's, that's, that's all. Like, I'm not going against scriptural or any of that. I'm just using data which I have. Because if this is true... This could be an invasion force. Okay. It's very simple. <laughs> 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 yeah, and we're all like happy. Oh, there's no violence, and then they come down, and we're meat. Do you? Okay. Do you think that they need to come here to blow us up? Well, they wouldn't want to blow us up because it's from oh, so yeah. They come. couldn't conquer us in a land war because they tried to do that throughout the whole Bible. They lost it, so now they have to do psychops. Go ahead. The Bible was written how many thousand years ago by people with what technology? And a lot of it's poetic. Yeah, but raining fire is raining fire. People. Oh, no. I'm not saying you're... Uh, you or, 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 like that. No, you guys obviously are racist, so and I'm not claiming you are. I'm why not even think racist. about it, you know? Well, it, it, who would be gone like that if they wanted to? It took a thousand years. Okay, you know, okay, I, yeah, we but, can do it ourselves now. We're so primitive. It's <laughs> time over the planet. What, if, what, what right? if they don't want to destroy us? Because they create us for a reason, right? If you create something and it is is not working... Then you go, right, it's gone. But if you create something as a resource, because we're bigger than them, we're stronger than them, we have more aggression than they do, and they're trying to control us, 
following just basic logic, where does that take you? They can make robots that look just like you. That's they a scary concept. They can program them to whatever they want, <laughs> but they program them to do whatever you want. Have you seen Rayal Bleed? Have you ever seen Rayal Bleed? Bleed. Bleed. Flood. Come on. <laughs> How do you know he's not a robot? It's just a question. Uh, oh, yeah. they, they would I've hugged him. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah. Like yeah one uh, just a so question. Just like, like don't touch me because there's like, a lot of security around him and whatnot. Which is really so. But like, <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering because like... No, no, no. But anyway, so you have a different conception of robots than they do. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because true. robots would be just like us, like that. Because we're not made for work. Like an android or whatever. They have them. Right. For war? They have robots. Work. We're not made for work. Work. They don't no, work for, on that planet. No, I mean for war. Why do they have robots work. then? Work. Work. Just work. 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 Okay. Work. 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 Not, they don't work. I'm just taking what you're saying here because it seems kind of strange to me that you would yeah. want this race to come back which kicked so much ass when they were last here. You know, that's, that's where it's kind of... <laughs> like, if you're right, if, if this is true, that's great. But if you want to get a hold of us, okay, we're at www.rantradio.com and you can come get us and we'll like sort this out for you because this is like... Wow, I hope I hope you're right. I really do. Yeah, so Internet radio program. Internet radio program. That's why I'm here. Like, cause I saw this. Like, wow, this is great for the station. But I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious because if this is true, like, assuming I'm assuming it's true now. Yeah, I'm assuming you're right. You're, Rails, Rails, a good guy. He's the goods. Little guys talk to him in '73 on a volcano face. Okay, but I'm just worried about their intent because if they can build robots. They can look like us, act like us, but have no aggressive tendencies or no sense of Why would they even have made us? Why would they, they have made, made us robots? if not for either us? food or slave race? That's, that's my whole point. Elohim. Sure, they're all just cloning, but are we going to be somebody else's fucking dinner? That's what I want to know, okay? You want to check out a little bit more about the Elohim? Here's their website, okay? Go check these assholes out because they think that they, you know, and here's their cloning website as well. This is a fucking handy device, a PDA, not required. Anyway, so, uh, PDAs. Uh, what you want to do is we can sit there. Uh, you never notice I do that. I'll just start going off, and if I don't know what the fuck I'm going to say, I go, we just sit there and we move, and, and on the other side, we, we, we do this. I do that a lot. Uh, what's next? What's next is army surplus gear. It's very important that to be a professional in today's day and age, you have to look the part. You have to look like, hi, I could fix your network, but I could probably kill your family. Best way to do this is do most of your shopping at an army surplus store. And army surplus stores are handy that way. So here's an intro for my army surplus store segment. Woo! When you're out and you're looking around, you've got to be running around in the web, on the net, that kind of thing. It's one thing to be looking for army surplus gear and kit that you got to keep the get kit with you, but you never get a chance to actually touch it. So where do you go to get the good kit? You can go to places like eholster.com where they have, like, you know, your $150 leather sling. But when then what happens then? You've got no place to actually go and check out stuff hands-on. So the best place to go to check that kind of stuff out, you want to go to an army surplus store because you can get good deals at good prices if you go to the right place. Best place I found is my buddy Dave's, which is where I got my shoulder rig, which I've been wearing for a good chunk of my life. They've been snapping, going here and there, but this guy's got all the good shit from all the different countries. We're going to give a bit of a point of how that works now. Check it out. That's Dave's. Okay, first things first. When you go in an army surplus store, you're not treated like a fucking scumbag. You're the guy there. You're paying for a product, which you, you should be the one who gets treated like a good person. I don't give a fuck how old you are because the guy's going to come in to spend cash. Now, let's see. What are you here for? We're going to be here to get gear for your kit, all right? You know, you can go to Nokia and all these little places that sell those, sell those shitty little fucking pleather cases, which are good for nothing anyway, or you can go and get something that costs you half as much, lasts you twice as long, and won't get you in trouble for stomping on squirrels. The kind of stuff I'm talking about is these guys here, Calder Ridge, for example. Now, Calder Ridge is a local company. They do all their stuff. There's places, calderidge.com, and you can pick up, let's see, a cell phone case off of these guys for like 17 bucks, 18 bucks, depending on what their make is. The advantage of going with a place that's got mil-spec gear, it's all done with heavy cordurage. Everything should be double-stitched. doesn't really matter so 
much what it's made out of. I mean, as long as it's a heavy material, but the big thing you got to watch with all things is stitching. Stitching, stitching, stitching. If the stitching's no good, get it the fuck out of here. It's okay to spend good money on kit. If you don't spend it, then pff, get out of my face. Now, if you're going to be buying kit, the one thing you got to know is what kind of a carrying system are you going to go with? Are you going to go with a carrying system that's going to be uh, all in your belt? Are you going to get all Batman about it? Or are you going to go for an all-over body solution, okay? If you're going to go for an all-over body solution, this is the next step up because you can go from, like, you can go to a belt solution where you take a series of belts and then put your pouches on there, which is good. However, getting in and out of vehicles can be a little bit timely, going over fences, things of that nature. The next step above that is to go for a shoulder holster solution. This is what the guys at E at uh, eholster.com did. They took a general shoulderized holster, put your PDA on one side, your cell phone on the other side, use one for a while, very, very good. Don't drop your gear because you know what? When you drop a $600 cell phone, it sucks a lot. Not only that, you drop your PDA, you've lost all your data. Very, very shitty. So, but then what next? Because you've got your GPS, you've got your MP3 player. It's just not going to fit in a shoulder rig anymore. So what do you got to do? you got to switch to an all-over body solution. Got to get that buzzword in there, okay? And if anybody gives you a new flag, hey, well, that's their problem, all right? What i got on here is I got an assault Salt vest. Salt vest, you should be paying between 50 to about $120, $150 Canadian for, which is about what, 75 cents American, something like that. But the point is, is if you spend the good money on the good kit, places to make good kit, guys like Black Hawk, Eagle Industries, uh, Calder Ridge also makes some stuff, but I don't think they make uh, any kind of a salt vest solution. But if you're just going to be starting out, there's no sense going and spending 150 bucks on getting yourself a decent salt vest. You can get some pretty good solutions for belts. A lot of belts come out have zippers on the inside so you can put things like handcuff keys you can get your various lock pick tools i mean whatever you really need and keep in there usually cash cash is king got to have the cash in there if you don't have cash in there it's going to be no good okay when you're looking at a load bearing solution okay you got to make sure that you're getting something that's a little bit rugged a little bit more hardcore why do you go with mill spec rather than some shit you buy at say oh i don't know like fucking la chateau the reason why is because the guys at la chateau don't use their gear the king here is function over form that's the idea if you have the fact that you can get some good kit that's military grade you know it's made for people who run around and shoot other people so this is why it's a good idea to have kit made that way this kind of stuff here this is south african webbing okay this is from 1984 the load bearing system i was wearing before which was all black probably pretty hard to see and to tune in on that's also south african design these are people who like run around in the desert all the day every day i mean african climates very very warm a vest solution is better than a jacket sometimes you know what in the summer you run around, you're doing a lot of stuff. You get really, really hot. Heat is a killer. Got to keep cryo. You don't keep cryo, everything goes for shit. Okay? If you're going to be buying something, make sure that your kid has got, like, don't get anything that's too worn through because if it's going to wear out, that's no good either. And it's okay. And people go, well, I work in a corporate environment. I have to wear, you know, suits and stuff like that, Sean. The solution here is to, A, keep your kit clean and keep it tight. This right now looks like a big bag of webbing, okay? But if you sit there, you do up all your straps, you keep it all tight and professional, you look like you're a pretty keen solution to any kind of problem that could possibly happen, okay? You don't look like you're a piece of shit. You look like you're a guy who's got it going on, okay? You're like, wow, that guy's dialed right in. He looks like a fucking shock trooper. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what's on your person. Have you got the gear you need? That's what's important. That's what you got to bear in mind when you're purchasing this stuff. If it costs 150 bucks and it's brand new, think about running through your washing machine a little while. Stand on one arm and pull on the other one. Does it come apart? No fucking good. There's a nifty little solution invented for people who are worried about tearing the shit out of their clothing. It's called rip stop nylon. What is rip knob stop nylon, you ask? Absolutely. It is the cyberpunk solution. What you got to do is rip stop nylon. When you tune right in on this, you'll see the little tiny squares. Look at all the little squares. They're just all right there. You know what happens there? If you rip one of them, it'll only fray to the edge of the square, as opposed to if you rip like a general piece of cloth, it'll tear out the entire thing. So rip stop is a solution. Why? Because it has purpose. Everything you have has to have purpose. If it doesn't have purpose, it's fluff. Another piece of kit that you got to have in every single A wall bag. I don't fuck who you are, because you know what? You're going to go out somewhere, you're going to crash, you're going to need a place to sleep. You know what you need to have? Any idiot can be uncomfortable. Important to remember, every idiot can be uncomfortable. It takes a little bit of fucking knowledge and know-how to be comfortable, okay? Ranger blankets. Ranger blankets, this whole fucking blanket probably weighs less than a pound. It's actually made out of recycled garbage bags. Super lightweight, super worn. I've used one up to minus 30. You couple this with a Gore-Tex baby bag, you are good to fucking go in any urban environment. Very, very sweet. Okay, so, you've gone, you've got all your 
kid, you got to have a bag to put it in because you know what? A vest isn't too much, and we need to go to extremes. We need to have a backpack to load our shit in. Okay, the number one thing you got to remember here is you can't have more than 30% of your own body weight, okay? So take what you weigh, divide it by like 1.30 or by 0. 0.30 or whatever the hell it is, and you get your 30% body weight. If you hump more than that, no matter who you are, you're going to wind up falling down and going boom, okay? Nobody can carry that for more than an extended length of time. You know what? Carrying your shit around will become a hassle. Nobody likes hassles. Don't do it. If you're going to be going for some serious volume, you want something that's small and lightweight, yeah, sure. A solution like this, you go with like your South African Bergen, okay, yeah. What can you carry in here? Well, most of South Africa, hence the name. But you don't really need to pack that. What you're going to need to pack is you're going to get yourself like a nice day pack, something like this. This is a ripoff of the Eagle Industries Becker Patrol Pack. It's what I use. I use the Eagle Industries one. I don't use this one here. Whenever you're looking at a bag, you're checking things like you're checking your strapping on the bag. You're making sure that the shoulder straps can stand up to some decent abuse. You're making sure everything's breathable. You're making sure that the whole works has gotten all over points so that it's not going to go when you put a little wear and tear on it. Bags die. It's what they do. You're going to spend money on kit that you're going to use every day. Here's what you spend it on. You spend it on your boots. You spend it on your bag. And you spend it on a decent tunic jacket. Knives. What about knives? Sean, you got to get a good knife. What what kind of knife should I get? What kind of is the knife we should get? Okay. The kind of knife you want to get is just very, very important. First of all, the knife's got to feel good to you. If it doesn't feel good to you, it's good for shit. Second of all, it can't send you to jail. Yeah, it's great that you don't wind up bleeding in an alley somewhere, but it's no good to get ass fucked in the shower either. Okay. So here's what you got to do. When you're looking at a knife, you could go for something like this, a K-bar solution, but where the hell are you going to carry something like that? Oh, excuse me, officer. No, I'm scared of cardboard boxes and dogs a lot. No, it doesn't work. Okay. So you go with a smaller fixed blade. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. But then you feel like, well, no, because it's really going to be hard. And you're going to wind up hurting yourself more than that. The number one solution you want to do is get yourself a folder. I don't like Gerber's. A lot of people do. Folders should be ambidextrous, thumb opening. If you're going to open one in front of a cop, okay, you don't sit there and pretend you're Ninja Boy Rambo. Okay, you don't do that. What you do is you sit there, you use two hands. And only if you drop it a couple times, it's good, too, because a lot of places have laws concerning that. Familiar yourself with the laws. Knowledge is power. I, myself, what I carry, I go with a CRKT, Columbia River Knife and Tool, to make a good knife. It's a cheap buck, and you don't wind up paying it through the nose like you do for SOG and for cold steel stuff. This thing here was designed by Bob... Casper and uh, another dude named Lynn Crawford, I think his name is. Anyway, he's all over tactical knives. These are solid knives, good blade. Knives are tools. You do not throw them. Ooh, throw it too. Gill hibbon knives, you know, those really fancy dancy ones? Good for shit, okay? They're all show, no going. What's the rule? Function over form. That's the plan. There's a lot that you can do with shoulder surfing, but there's a lot you can do from shoulder surfing from across the street. And it's even better when you can shoulder surf from down the block. We're talking about optics. If you can get a hold of a decent set of optics, something with some good, uh, you can get some stuff that has ambient lighting, but you start getting into that kind of thing. Unless you steal it from the Army, you're going to be making some big bucks invested into to that. What you're going to do is get yourself something small, compact, take a look, think about functionality, think about waterproof. You're going to be outside. You're going to be going binning. You're going to have posting watches. Guys are going to be on rooftops to see what gets thrown in the trash. You need to have something small. You can pull out your AWOL bag or your tack vest and make sure that you can spot it, okay? Some guy's junking out trash. Hey, it's his garbage. You can pick it up, but you got to know what's there. You got to know. You got to see it. That's why optics are the way to go. You're spending anywhere between eh, 50 bucks to 200 bucks, but it's gravy. It's gravy. You can get a larger piece of kit. You don't have to spend the big money, okay? That's the plan. Okay, last but not least, okay, when you go into an army surplus store, the number one thing is price. Most of these guys buy their stuff in case slots, okay? They buy it from a abandoned kit from the government. Obviously, the optics and stuff like that they don't. Brand new kit, they don't. But you shouldn't be paying through the nose. If you're going to be good, keep on going in there, guys like uh, Dave's here, I mean, there's lots of army surplus stores around. Why did I do Dave's? Because Dave's got the best gear, the best prices, and he treats people well. You can get Dave at the, at the email address below. He does shop online, and, and your American money always counts for more cash up here, okay? So until that, that's pretty much what you're looking for in an army surplus store. Make sure that you get, get, don't get caught up in fluff. If something doesn't feel right, you're probably being ripped off. This would be the new church. Today's Sunday. It's before the show. And as you look around, you will find that people come from one church and they go to another one. The political church of the mall. The great mall. And people wonder why, you know, they walk around, they see things. And uh, they do these different little rituals on their Sundays. They come down here, go to the mall, you know. And something where it would be as simple as, you know, buying a... I don't know, fuck whatever it is you need to buy, you spend up, wind up spending hours and hours and hours wandering through the mall. Now, this is all shot on 8mm tape because it becomes very painfully obvious as you walk around and you see things how incredibly corrupted things have become. 
when our sense of community becomes, wow, the parking at the mall is really bad, and everybody knows what you're talking about because it's, it's the intensity of the mall, the atmosphere of the mall, and it's nothing more than a series of shots. I don't really get that. I don't really understand how that works, and I don't know how we got to that stage when the mall became a social mecca, where the mall became a place to meet chicks. You know? Something fucked up about that. Your living room is the factory. The product being manufactured is you. You'll notice I had white hair there, and I don't have white hair now. Try to keep up with me on this one, okay? Just try to keep up. Anyway, that was before, when I was fat, as opposed to the buffness, which you now see before you. Okay, um, also, what's coming next is, once upon a time, I had these people who hired me and my wife to go to their house and look after this elusive cat, Satan cat, okay? And Satan cat, we never saw because it was, well, Satan. And it would, all my particular tasking was, uh, Adrian, my wife, the dark one, she had to go and water all the plants and make sure everything was cool. My designation was I had to go and empty the kitty litter box. Yes, the kitty litter box. And I abhor many things, but the thing I hate more than anything else in the galaxy, even more than Scientologists, is in fact the smell of cat shit. Cat shit is horrendous. It's horrible. It's a terrible thing. It should be banned. So I had to go and filter this out. Now, Sumerian came with me and filmed the experience for your viewing pleasure. Yes, it's Sean K. Anton Catch It. <laughs> no, it's not what I hate to do in the whole world. You got that wrong. It's the oh. smell. <laughs> it's the smell. <laughs> it's the smell of cat shit. The indefinable odor of the feline. Yes, yes, it's true. Maybe we'll see the Maybe today we'll get a chance to sight the small feline, which leaves large clumps of shit, which I was claiming. Which I'm doing for a fee, am I not? Oh, there is incentive. I was wondering why you. No, I just it. fucking get off and come in here, pick it through gravel, put Tootsie Rolls. Like, now that's two days worth of catch shit. Why don't I ask you? Oh, there's that smell. Fuck, that is almost amazing. What? Yeah, but, fuck, I don't create this much shit in three days. <laughs> I'm 230 fucking pounds, man. Like, what the hell is this cat doing? <laughs> Um, fuck, man. Is there any plants missing? I know it's not a tiger, because we'd see it. You know, tigers don't hide very well. Mm-mm, boy. Lumps of cat shit. A good lump of cat shit. You're not actually going to use this on a fucking ranch either, right? <laughs> no, not this one. It's not... Well, if it turns out funny. Well, it's, it's not so funny so far. <laughs> it's just kind of... It's just amusing to me, but probably not the masses. Why is it amusing to you? Just because the sight Because you the hate smell. it so much. Fuck the smell of the shit in It's the smell. It's the smell. It's repulsive. Isn't it? I don't really give a fuck about uh, what people actually were to use. You can use just about anything in my life on, on <laughs> TV. I, mean, I don't really care. I don't really have many secrets. I mean, it's not like I'm Tom Green where I go out and create fucking shit to go wrong. <laughs> That's right. If Tom Green was here, he'd be like, oh, I'm eating cat shit just to prove that I'm a sick fuck. Gritty. Mm, oh, I'm very cat <laughs> shit. Yeah, you thought that was a prop, didn't you? <laughs> I'm just my... Fuck, I hate Tom Green. <laughs> Tom Green and cat shit. <laughs> That's your title for this kid. <laughs> this whole thing. Tom Green talking about Tom Green while he's out doing cat shit. You know, the neat thing about filtering cat shit is it's like a puzzle, you know? You pick up a file, filter it out, and there's your prize! <laughs> <laughs> you know? What the fuck? That's great. Somebody needs to stop Bill Gates. Maybe we should, like, package this up, and we'll just mail lumps of cat shit <laughs> to Microsoft every day. Hey, Microsoft, have a lump of cat shit. You're really... <laughs> Sean Kennedy. Sean Kennedy, because you suck. <laughs> and every time my Rogers goes down, I'm mailing you a lump of cat shit. <laughs> Searching, no, no, searching, more searching. Sad. The fact that we're like talking about like uh, you know world events while filtering cat shit, or the fact you're filming it. Like, what does that say about you? You know, that's really it's an important part of your life that you've got to document. 
Oh, filtering out cat shit? God, I hope not. <laughs> if this is one of the most important parts of my life, I'm going to go suck on a 12-gauge right after this. <laughs> what a horrible fucking animal cats are, eh? I don't like cats. No? No. Dog man. Oh, big time. Yeah. Actually, what I want to do is I want to get a mini Dutch hound. Mm-hmm. That's what Sean Livingston had. And I never got more respect for a mini Dutch hound in all my life. So I was sitting there. I got this, his mini Dutch hound. His name's Spanky. Yeah. And one night, he would go and I'd talk to Spanky. And Spanky would sit there. Because they sit in the way the mini Dutch hound sits. Their little ass and just drops in the front of their body. doesn't actually move. <laughs> so he drops his ass. Boom. Yeah. Looking at you. And I'd talk away to him about all sorts of shit. And he'd flop his little head around as if he really understood what the fuck I was saying. Meanwhile, he's thinking food. <laughs> Anyway, it's so like he's talking, and then uh, I go to the magic words, and then I go to bed. Yep. And because see, mini gotchhounds are ratters, so they like tunnels. <laughs> so what happens is I get under the covers, and he gets his nose under the covers and runs down under the covers, and I like roll over, and he's like curls up right in the, the crook of my knee right here, way underneath the covers with all these quilts on. And I'm like, shit! I hope he can breathe. <laughs> you know, he's like in the middle of this big bed all his way have a cover on. Yeah, dogs can sleep under the covers like amazing. But then I farted. <laughs> and it was bad. <laughs> like it was a bad fart. It was you know when you have those farts you're like, fuck, that's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, and you can barely stand and it I yourself. Can barely stand it? That's one of those farts. <laughs> the dog didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't move my muscle, man. He just he just laid there. And I went to sleep, and I thought he was dead. But sure as shit, I woke up the next morning, and he's up, and he's wagging his tail. And I never gained so much respect for an animal in all my life. It's spanky. The mini Dutch, I mean, breathe. So, so basically you're saying you want a dog so loyal... Oh, he will sit there and just, breathe your shit fumes. You'll, yes. you'll lift the blankets, and he'll just be right there for you. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. That dog will kick ass. Just amazing. Amazing. So, yes. lots of booty today. <laughs> this is our Microsoft package. Put that in your coffers. Well, put that right there and <laughs> carry on. This fucking sucks. Cool! Very slick. We like that kind of stuff. Uh, what's next, though? Nothing. That's it. End of the program. End of the download. Hopefully, uh, your boss hasn't caught you doing this at work. And, well... That's about it. We're pretty much done. Now, what do you do? You've downloaded this. You've watched it. What's the next step? The next step is to share it. Share with everyone. Take everything you've seen here and distribute it freely. Install Kaza or fucking, you know, Morpheus or whatever the hell else you got on your system. Install it. Share it. Okay? Because you know why? Because it's video. Video eats bandwidth. Okay? Uh, we need bandwidth badly. Very badly. So if anyone out there can please give us bandwidth, please. Please, more bandwidth. I mean, we need bandwidth to distribute these videos. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more fun with them. And, it'll, and if you like that cat shit, boy, there's more where that came from. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff we're going to be filming and doing. Uh, all the crazy shit that goes on in our life, we're going to be happening. And uh, we're going to be filming it and just doing it so that you guys get some real alternatives to the bullshit you get fed on a day-to-day -day basis. All right? So if you can give us bandwidth, please email here. Okay, because we need that. Um, and, uh, yeah, anything else that comes along, you can pretty much look for, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, keep your eyes open for FTP sites. Later! You know what's really weird? You get a lot of people and they look around in the world today. You see everything happening in society. You see everything on the internet. You see everything in advertising and all that kind of jazz. And you know what it winds up being? It winds up being confusion. Confusion and distraction. Distraction and confusion. Confusion is the tool to stop your brain, your mind, from focusing on the things that are important to you. That's the problem. That's what you need to wonder about. You've got to get the, yourself focused. If you don't have focus, you're bitched. Without focus of the mind, you've got nothing. Without focus of the mind, you can't focus on the things that are important to you. Why are commercials designed the way are? It's all shock cut, shock cut, shock Shock cut. Everything's in on you, right in your face. You can never determine what's important to you. You can never see what's important to you. You can only see what they want you to see. And then, after you've been deeply programmed, after you've been crammed in your little cell for a while, you're bitched. You're bitched. You got nothing you can go with. And then what? Then what do you have, huh? Then you're just lost. You're wandering around. No idea who the hell you are. You got no focus. You got nothing going on in the mind. The mind is important. Your own mind is important. That's what you need to remember. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you purify your mind? How do you keep yourself so your head's clean and clear and you can think? First thing you got to do is shut everything else off. You got to close down all the other things that aren't really important. Don't really matter. 
sure. You sit there and you got all this television and wanting and needing your wants and needs, your needs and wants, and everything gets all fucked up and you have no idea which is important, which is not important. Stand back, unplug, turn everything off, sit in the dark for a while. Gotta reboot the head, man. You gotta reboot the head, man, because if you don't reboot the head, you're fucked. You're fucked. And then what? Then what? Then what do you do? You're sitting there, you have no idea what you want, so you have to unfocus. You have to sit there, turn everything off, and then turn it back on and think about who you are. What is it that you want? What do you want out of life? What would other people see if they sat back and watched you for a long period of time? What would be the thing that they witness out of your life? Number one thing you got to remember is how important you are. you got to remember how important your own thoughts are, your own beliefs, your own ideals. Because you know what? At the end of the day, nothing anybody, anyone else says matters. People come at me all the time saying, hey, Sean, hey, Sean, you should do this. Hey, Sean, you should do that. Why do you run cult this way? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to go to MTV? Why do you want to talk to people in modern media? Hey, you don't like it? Fuck you, okay? I've got no time for that, all right? I'm just trying to live my life and do what I want with my thing. You want to do something? You do something your own way. Do it your own way. You don't need me. You don't need television. You don't need Gandhi, Buddha, God, nothing, man. You don't need none of that. You got to unplug the mind and focus in on yourself because you are your own person. That's what's important. So what are you supposed to take out of this? What's the idea you're supposed to have inside your own head? The number one idea that you got to have inside your own head is that you don't need anybody. You don't need anyone. You always got to remember what's important and what's important for you. Don't start buying shit just because you see some images on the screen on the TV. Don't listen to Sean K because Sean K tells you stuff. Don't listen to the media because the media tells you stuff. Don't listen to Henry Rollins or Jella Biafra or Noam Chomsky or any of those guys just because they tell you stuff. Go make up your own mind. Get all your data. Make your own decision and always remember, hey, I could be wrong. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. SKTFM.TV Hit you in the face with a shovel. <laughs>